Welcome to the Bombshell Business Podcast, where driven fempreneurs learn how to become more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident. Turn your dreams into actionable, marketable, and profitable plans and make your business irresistible. Hey, Bombshell. Welcome back to the Bombshell Business Podcast, or welcome if you're a new listener. I hope everyone is settling in post-holidays and that you are acclimating to the new year and all the great energy that comes from um, just the newness, the freshness, the the fresh start, if you will. Um, right now I'm super excited. I'm doing, I'm right in the midst of, um, my five day challenge where I promise you that you will get 10 hours of your life back every single week moving forward. If you'll commit about 20 minutes per day to the things that I challenge you to do, um, a little out of my comfort zone, maybe not my comfort zone, but just maybe my area of expertise. Um, I definitely am sending uh, participants an email every morning, so writing, totally down with that. Um, but I'm also doing a Facebook Live every day at 11 Central Time. Um, and so there's already um, some up there by the time you listen to this episode. And um, yes, because I'm recording in the week, because I too am quite adjusting from a crazy um holiday season, a crazy and a blessed holiday season, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but I've got some uh, Facebook Lives that are recorded. You could go back and watch and um, participate in this challenge because I'm giving you real concrete strategies that you can implement and um, get that time back so you can up-level, so you have time to do the things that you want to do that maybe you, you can't do because you're so in the weeds day to day. Um, so having a lot of fun with that. Back to the holidays, not only did I get great time with my family, all my family, um, all of my siblings, my um, including um, my sister came to town, um, my other sister didn't make it, so that was a bummer, but um got to spend great time with all of my kids in the same room in the same state, which always makes me happy, and my stepdaughter and son-in-law had our second grandchild, so... Um, welcome to the world, Annabelle Reese. She's joining Ellie Claire, and um, they are quite happy, healthy. Everything is grand. So we have a two-year-old and a newborn um, in the family um, in in the grand kid category. So they call me Gigi, and I think it's totally awesome. I love, love, love it. So lots of good things happening. Um, I hope that you had time to reflect on all the good things happening in your world, but um, <laughs> today, I don't know why, I just felt like this is what I needed to talk to you about. Um, it wasn't really what I had intended on talking to you about, but um, I, I think that we need to talk about how to deal with people who suck. So today's episode um, is for those of you who are like me, like you have a great life, um, you're very blessed, you're trying to kick but and take names and really do something in this world and use your gifts and talents to help other people and obviously provide for your family and all those good things. And then like these people who suck come in and you're like, why are you being such a butthead? Like, <laughs> why does this have to happen? Um, and, and there's a way to manage that. So today I'm going to teach you, there's so many different ways, but I will teach you three ways to deal with people who suck. So First way that I would normally tell you is just remove yourself from their sphere of influence, but that's not always a reality, right? So if if you have maybe a friend who is just an energy suck or um, maybe they're a time suck or um, maybe they just make you feel like less than who you are, that is a legitimate reason to remove yourself from their sphere of influence. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, like, stop hanging out with them. Stop saying yes when they invite you places um, or, or to um, activities or, or whatever. Um, you know, phase them out of your life. That's, that's the obvious solution. But for some reason, um, when I talk to women especially, they feel guilt around, like, this particular situation. And anybody who knows me, I am, I am so open. I am ridiculously open. Like I have no uh, 
filter, my my mystique personality trigger, if you're f- familiar with fascination assessment, like is non-existent. Um, and so I'm very, very open. But in terms of who I actually allow to have time and space in my life, I'm very guarded um, because I know to guard my heart and I know to guard my life. And um, and I know that I only have so many breaths each day and those breaths are going to be uh, given to the people who um, are blessings and who are positive and who I want to be like and who, um, you know, care about me and my family and my business and those sort of things. So um, unfortunately, we are in circumstances, especially in business, where we can't just remove ourselves from these people's sphere of influence. Sometimes we have to deal with people we don't like. Sometimes that is um, customers or vendors. Sometimes that's even your own employees. Could be um, your business partner and you are having challenges. Um, Maybe you listen uh, to this podcast and you're not a female business owner. Maybe you are um, someone who works for a company and you have somebody maybe in your department that sucks. Um, so, I mean, the list can go on and on and on. You could be in a volunteer situation where you're on a committee with somebody who's just terrible. Um, and so these three ways to deal with people who suck are for you, for the people who can't just say, you know what, this person's just not going to have my time or energy anymore. So number one, I want you to be a broken Coke machine. Do what? Amber, what are you talking about? I want you to be a broken Coke machine. Now, understand I live in the South, so everything's a Coke. Like if you want a Dr. Pepper, it's a Coke. If you want a Sprite, it's a Coke. If you want a sparkling um, or carbonated beverage that has syrup in it to give it flavor, that is a Coke in the South. So maybe I should say be a broken soft drink machine or soda machine or pop machine or wherever you are in the country. Um, fill in the blank of what you call a soft drink. Uh, and so uh, what does that mean? Okay, so just go with me to the break room of, of anywhere. You could be at a hospital. You could be, now let's go to your work. So let's just imagine that you have a soft drink machine at your work. And um, one day you go in and you put you put the money in there and it doesn't give you a Coke back. So you're like, oh, that sucks. Maybe you shake the machine. Maybe you hit like, you know, refund or return or whatever, and you don't get your money back, and you also don't get a Coke. So you're a little bit frustrated. You didn't get what you want, so you stomp off, but you come back the next day, right? Because that was a fluke, and you want a Coke the next day. And so you come back, and you look for that Coke again, and you put the coins in or the dollar or whatever it is, and and then the Coke machine doesn't give you a Coke again, And you're like, well, oh my gosh, this sucks. Like this machine is not working. And so you go away and you're frustrated and maybe you wait a week this time because uh, surely by then it's been fixed or the person has come and serviced it or whoever's responsible for for the soft drink machine has done something, surely to goodness, right? So you come back in a week and you put your money in and you are so excited about your refreshing Coca Cola and it still doesn't give you a Coke. What do you do from there? You probably don't go back to that machine because it didn't give you what you wanted. You came at it with your money and it did not respond the way that you wanted to. So you just give up on it because you didn't get the reaction. That's what I want you to do when somebody comes at you with their dollar bill wanting a Coke. When they want to get a rise out of you, when they want to stir the pot with you, when they want to gossip with you, when they want to make your life more difficult because they are just a sad, sorry, angry little soul in this world who is lost, don't give them the Coke. Don't give them the Coke the second time they come to you. Don't give them the Coke the third time they come to you. Don't give them the Coke the fourth time they come to you. Eventually, they'll realize they are not getting the reaction from you that they want, and they will stop going to the broken Coke machine. So, Remember that when you deal with somebody who's difficult and you can't kick them out of your life and you just have to deal with them, obviously you want to be professional. Obviously you want to be kind. Be all the things that you are, but just don't give them the Coke that they're looking for. And that might take a little practice. That might take maybe when you deal with them, 
journaling real quick or that night or or whatever and say okay this is this is what they did this is how i reacted this is how i want to re- this is how i want to respond next time if you don't go back and kind of reflect on the circumstance and how they come at you and how they get that out of you then you'll never be able to understand how what triggers you to respond the way that you do so again be professional be kind don't change your personality, but do draw the line and not give them the the anger, the frustration, the reaction that they're trying to get because their little miserable life needs the drama. Um, and so they're going to go get it from you by putting in, you know, three quarters and expect you to give them the drama Coke. Okay. So be a broken Coke machine. Number two, focus on the end result that you want. So this is kind of like an if-then scenario. If you want, let's just say, um, if you want somebody on a volunteer committee that you are working with to ultimately do the work that is expected of them in order to move the committee's project forward, then how do you need to approach that person? So I'll hear people say, oh my gosh, that person's just so awful to deal with. I'm just, I'm just not even, I just, every time I tell them exactly what I think and, and I say, well, how, how did that work out for you? Well, they know. I know you've never said that before. I know I've never said that before. Well, they know how I feel. Well, I told them, okay, well, did you get what you wanted in the end? Well, no. Did you increase the level of conflict? Well, yeah, but. Now they know I'm in charge. Okay, so you're in charge in the way that you led that person or influenced that person did not net you what you wanted in the end. Oh, so if if it's more important to be right or it's more important to be recognized as the one who's in control, then, you know, good for you. But if it's more important to get your way in the end. By your way, I mean the vision of the committee or a happy marriage or a good relationship with an employee. If that's really the end result that you want, then you have to kind of turn into a little bit of a psychologist. You have to understand what motivates them. You have to understand what is making them be negative and push back. Once you can find out what drives that person and what motivates that person, then you can start to be a little more strategic in how you communicate with that person. Sometimes people just need to be heard. Sometimes people need a platform. Now, I'm the first person to, like, call out passive-aggressive behavior. I'm the first person to get a meeting back on, on target. But at the end of the day, if I need a group of people to get from A to B, I'm going to figure out what drives them. And I will give them assignments or perhaps direct questions to them in the meeting that draws on those key drivers. So let's let's give an example. If somebody wants to feel like they're in charge, but they're not, and they're struggling with that because their personality is leader, maybe it's a a red personality, if you're familiar with that, or a D personality um, on the DISC profile, and they don't like that somebody else is in charge, then it might be that as people are having a discussion, you you look to them and say, what's your opinion on that? Or you've had experience in this before. What's your take on that? Giving them the opportunity to step into the role that they desire makes it a lot less harder on you. Now, that doesn't mean you have to let them take over the reins, but what can you do in order to drive them in the direction that you need them to go? You could just say, well, this is how it's going to be. Suck it up, buttercup. But if that doesn't get you the end result that you're looking for, then, I mean, you're you're losing. So it's a lose-lose situation. So I want you to focus on the end result that you want and then go from there. Okay, number three. I want you to allow people to show you and others who they really are. This is a tricky one. <laughs> Um, first of all, the cream always rises to the top. So no matter what you do, if somebody is a, um, 
how's how do I want to say this? A a crapster. Sorry, moms, if you have the kids in the back seat. Uh, if somebody is like that, that's going to manifest in all areas of their life. People are going to recognize them for that. They are going to show their true colors. If you try to battle that eye for eye, then you might be associated as a crap stirrer. So just let them sink themselves is basically what I'm trying to say. Don't participate. Don't lobby against them. Don't try to um, uncover every bad thing that they do and, um, and you know, promote it and, and get on your bullhorn and stand on your soapbox and say, look what Sally's doing. It's wrong because people are going to see it. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't address problems directly, and especially if it's in your organization, if you or your company, if it's your company and there is a crapster on your team, then you need to address that one-on-one. But in other areas, like if you're doing business with another company or if you're in a small town like I am, heavens to know, there is... <laughs> There are ample opportunities for um, inter-business drama or even just, you know, people who are involved in the community. Um, I I can see this getting tricky, especially, um, you know, like on volunteer committees or maybe if you do business with another company in town and um, maybe not everybody in that company's uh, shares the same values as you. So it could be that you're working with like a sign company, which for the record, my sign company is freaking amazing. They're the most awesome people ever. So I'm going to use this success as a very far-fetched example, but maybe you have to work with a sign company and you already have, um, a contract with them. They're already, you're like halfway through the project. You, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to, to back up yet. Um, and, and maybe you're having a challenge with one of their employees, you can manage that communication where the owner of that company is going to see the problem without you having to raise Kane about it. Um, same with a, a volunteer situation. You can, you can move forward with a project with all people participating in said project and allow that person's true colors to show simply by allowing them to hang themselves, essentially. Martin Luther King says that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. So sometimes it's tempting, and I see this happen a lot with females. Um, sometimes it's tempting to, you know, go an eye for an eye. And if somebody talks about you or they um, do something to undermine you, um, maybe they backstab you in a situation. It's it's easy to want to maybe quietly um, infiltrate uh, the the scene and let people know, oh, this person did this, this, and this, and and start that gossip train um, because you are hurt and you feel like this person is is damaging your reputation, or maybe this person is making life more difficult on you. Maybe they're by their actions, it's causing you to do twice as much work and you just wish that they weren't involved at all. Um, And the reality is that if you try to do that, if you, if you get your, if you stoop down to their level and you get in the, the mud bath with them, then you're going to be covered in it too. So take the high road your actions will be exactly your testimony. And I'm not getting biblical here. I'm saying that your actions are louder than their words. And when people see that that person is consistently causing problems or being a roadblock or whatever, they will self-identify as a person who sucks and you will self-identify as a person who's always there for people. You always move projects forward. You don't get into drama. You stick to business. Um, you know, you try to be helpful and that sort of thing. So, you know, be the light and your light will shine that much more brightly when you're in the midst of their darkness. And keep in mind too, you have no idea what's going on in these people's worlds. Um, if there's one thing that I've learned the hard way through just my own fall from grace, 
um, as a teen mom, it's it's that you have no idea what people are dealing with in the in the behind the scenes. And I guess, you know, we talked about this in junior high and let's just be real. Sometimes as adults, it's like, for real, am I in junior high again? Like, this is kind of ridiculous. Um, but in junior high, sometimes we talked, you know, in the after school specials or on the sitcom, you would see that somebody was a little bit of a bully or, you know, maybe they were a jerk face. Um, <laughs> they were just mean or gossipy. The, the girl in your class that was just, you know, awful. And then you found out, you know, that person's parents were going through a divorce or maybe they're, you know, one of their parents was dealing with addiction or, you know, maybe they had a, a loss in their family. Maybe they're being abused. And so that was kind of like the after school special in junior high. Well, guess what? Some people just never grow up and they don't emotionally mature. Um, they, they have uh, limited emotional intelligence and they just haven't had enough life experience sometimes to mature beyond that junior high mentality. And so, if you approach all people, and I'm not saying I do this 100%, sometimes I just want to punch people in the throat if I was being quite honest, but I have learned that if you approach people first with grace and maybe just understanding that they're so miserable that they have to vomit out that misery in your world, it's just it, they can't even contain it. They just have to spew it on the world and on the people around them. You almost have to feel bad for them. So keep your nose clean. Don't stoop down to them. You stay at the level that you operate at. You stay a light in the darkness and, and, and be who you are, no matter how people are around you. I think that's the most important part. You hear me say, just do you repeatedly. And when I say just do you, I'm saying shine brightly as as a person that God made you to be, as as the only person who can be you. Shine brightly in the good times. Um, shine brightly when you're insecure. Shine brightly when uh, people are being jerk faces. Shine brightly when you have to deal with people who suck. That is, that's all you have to do in this world is show up, express your talents, whether that's professionally or personally, love other people, and the rest is going to work itself out. Now, I could tell you story after story of just sweet, sweet, sweet karma. And um, and I don't necessarily believe in karma, but I, I do joke about it. Um, and that's fine if you do. I'm not knocking anybody. Um, but I, I, did, um, I did say before that uh, I'm going to write a book that is titled um, I Waited on Karma. Because what I have found is when I take the high road, and I haven't always, let me just be, you know, frank with that. But in general, in very difficult conversations or very difficult situations where I was deeply hurt, and I, I'm thinking personally, but but professionally, when I was just deeply, deeply hurt, it sucked then, and I wanted to react then, and I wanted to avenge myself then. But in the end, when I look back at those situations now, I look at where I'm in life and how much joy and how many blessings I have and what strong relationships I have, both current and just ongoing from my past and the success that that I've realized. And I'm not saying this to beat my chest. I'm trying to build up a point here. Um, I've got a great life. And then you kind of look over at the continuous turmoil, the same situations, no growth in relationships, no growth in business, um, and, and you look and you're just like, wow, I mean, in the end, like I didn't even have to do anything and I still won. I mean, that person is still miserable and I'm still happy. And so at the end of the day, when you have to deal with people who suck, just know they're punishing themselves anyways with their own misery. So you really don't have to do anything to like get back at them, right? So let's recap. How do you deal with people who suck? Well, here are the three ways. First, you want to be a broken Coke machine. Just don't give the reaction. Two, um, or second rather, you want to focus on the end result that you want um, and consider that if-then scenario. If I want this, then what do I need to do to get that? Of course, without you know, <laughs> without breaking any um, 
uh, integrity or code of ethics or anything. I mean, like from a positive space, what do you need to do if you want a certain situation to happen and or a certain person to be influenced a certain way? And then um, third, you want to allow people to show you and others who they really are. You don't have to do it for them. They're going to do it for themselves. Um, and, and so again, shine brightly, just do you. And as you're moving into a busier season, as people are getting back into the game for 2017, um, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of intensity. And maybe that's what I'm sensing with you all that made me feel like I needed to talk about this. Um, as spring comes, um, people are going to really start um, being super engaged and um, trying to get ahead of like the summer season. And then before you know it, you're going to be at the holidays again. So I want you to focus on being your best version of you. And no matter who comes at you, whether they're, they're great blessings or they're people that you don't really want to deal with, and you, but you have to, um, I just I want you to find your center, find your joy, and use these three strategies to um, deal with those people who suck. So uh, if, you, if you want to uh, take part in the challenge that I'm working on this week that we're super excited about, um, just go to amberhurdle.com forward slash, um, you know what, look for episode 24, forward slash podcasts with an S, amberhurdle.com forward slash podcasts with an S. Look for episode 24. We'll have an opt-in there. And then um, you can also go to Facebook and go to my Facebook page. Make sure you give me a like. It's Amber Hurdle Fan. So Amber Hurdle Fan is my Facebook page. And um, if you're listening to this at the beginning of January, then um, my my banner image on there will take you directly to um, the opt-in opportunity to take part in that challenge. So um, I appreciate you listening to this. I also appreciate you hanging with me um, and jumping on the struggle bus with me as I'm trying to get caught up and handle all of my um, eager planning clients who are ready to kick off awesomeness in January, um, really trying to tend to them. And so this podcast is slipping just a little bit in the days that we re- we release, but I promise I'm going to stick it out with you and I will get these out. Um, so thank you for your grace on that. And I wish you the best week possible and I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit AmberHurdle.com for more resources and be sure to tune in again. Cheers to you, Bombshell.